Hello, hello everyone. Dr. Judy here. <clears throat> Dr. Judy here of Dr. Judy WTF with the Freud and welcome to the show. And tonight's episode is titled Grieving the Narcissistic Parents You Never Had. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for Zalman Raxin, our grief recovery counselor at the Psychological Healing Center to speak on this topic because this is a unique sense of loss. It's not like somebody died or, or, or um, a, a, an illness was uh, experienced and you lost some body parts or body functions. It's, it's really a totally different type of loss and yet the feelings are very, very powerful. So we're going to talk about grieving the narcissistic parents you never had. And I, I want to let everyone that know that narcissistic personality, it, it, it's, according to researchers, less than 1% of the general population has evidence of full-blown NPD. So we're going to talk about narcissistic characteristics. And in general, I see narcissism as a system gone wrong. And the system gone wrong is, is something that goes in reverse. So a parent is supposed to nurture the child. And hi, Zalman. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hi. <laughs> and thank you again for being here. Pleasure. And uh, I really appreciate your uh, treating the, the clients at the Psychological C Healing Center. We have people coming in who've experienced some profound loss. And uh, also Zalman is... Uh, learning mind map therapy and he is offering the mind map therapy at a lower fee so that people can take advantage of the system and uh, we want to make it accessible and available to everyone so first of all please know that you can get a free copy of the book be the cause healing human disconnect that is completely free it's a pdf and if you don't have any kind of budget for the, for um, therapy we have free material, the book, and then we have, I think, what, three or 400 YouTube videos up, and uh, there's a lot of information that you can learn online. We have some beautiful blogs on uh, our website. Website is psychologicalhealingcenter.com. You can also get their shortcut method, drjudywtf.com will take you there. And so the system gone wrong uh, creates really dire consequences on <coughs> children and adult children. And uh, we're going to talk about that. And first of all, I want to talk about um, NPD and what the symptoms are of NPD. And again, I'm framing it in terms of a system gone wrong. So the person who is a uh, 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 having these MPD symptoms, they were injured at the causal re level, meaning that their blueprint from their family of origin didn't go too well. And that's why they're demeaning or, or devaluing, destroying, discarding, using, lacking empathy. And I can name a whole bunch of other symptoms, but that basically covers a lot. Yeah. Okay, so if you're the child of one of these people who lack empathy and controls and demeans and devalues and destroys, then obviously you're not going to feel too well. And many of the people who come to see us at the Psychological uh, Healing Center are suffering from narcissistic uh, abuse, and we help them recover and heal the disconnects that led them to feel low self-esteem and shame and burden and, 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 and a whole bunch of other symptoms that we're going to talk about. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I believe all relationships have some sort of, I mean, we're calling it narcissism, but, you know, naturally we, we care about ourselves and we look out for ourselves and ultimately the goal is to be a healthier person and care for others. And you were mentioning about the, the, the mother, infant, the, the parents and the child, which is a right. normal, right, the normal sense of love and wanting to give and cheer and nurture. So in this Correct. case of narcissistic parents, I'll call it you know the idea of the night and day of the living dead. And, and, and I want to just start by defining, you're a parent, you have three beautiful children. I'm a parent okay. and a grandmother, and <coughs> uh, I have three beautiful children, including my grandson. 
And what does it mean to be a true mother or true father is, of course, there are going to be times that you're going to put yourself first because you have to self-care. And I'm not talking about not getting proper sleep or hiring a babysitter or um, taking a break from your children. That's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where a parent actually is uh, using that child to fill their emotional needs. Okay, and so what does it mean to be a parent? Uh, go so, ahead. What uh, do you think it means to be a parent? Just to, to jump on the idea yeah. about the idea of being a parent. So there's an interesting um, saying, a Hasidic saying, the difference between children and adults. Okay. Children choose to be right. Cho sorry. Cho children choose to be happy over being right. Adults choose to be right over being happy. Interesting. Where does it flip? We're, oh, how so that's so sense? that's the idea. So we're okay. saying, how do you? How can we be a good parent, right? Okay. So I think it's the idea of you know being a healthy human being, ultimately understanding that we need to share, we need to be able to give. So yes. if I'm in the position of being a parent, so I am required and responsible for the child. Absolutely. So then I need to give of myself, of my energy, of my time. Which which also means giving mental health, which also brings us to the responsibility that in order to be the best of our best as parents or as people, we have to be in as best a healed state as possible. Because if we're shadowed over by childhood wounds, and I'm going to repeat, there are five of, of, of them that I talk mostly about. Um, they are physical abuse and sexual abuse and verbal abuse and uh, uh, smothering and emotional uh, or physical uh, abandonment or neglect. And these, these wounds then shadow over us and stop our, our growths, to stop our psycho, uh, spiritual, and sometimes <coughs> even physical growth, compromises our growth. So in order to be a parent, let's just throw some things out there. You're right, we, we've got to be givers. And yeah. then we've got to be protectors, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest challenge is that when you grow up with narcissistic parents or, you know, in, in more simple terms, very selfish, self-centered people. Right. So what happens is, is that they don't give you what you need. So you're always looking and you're looking to take care of yourself. You're looking to find ways to survive. And what happens is, okay. is that you start to train yourself now to always be looking out for yourself. And what happens is, is sometimes people can get to somewhat of a healthier level, but they don't realize and they continue to look and look. So it'll move on to relationships and move on to when they have children that they're always looking to take. And what happens is you get so used to it. That becomes your nature. And you need to look after yourself yeah. because you weren't looked after. Exactly. Right. And then you, you and you're always and that's why you know you never we never want to share, so to speak. Like So you can you can take on the qualities of, of these narcissistic traits just because you're trying to survive and you've given up on the idea that there's empathy and connection in yeah. the world. So and now what what for? Can, why it's why also for connect? And it's, it's also how we're, we're taught because when we see others doing it, right, the, our parents are the closest to us in the beginning as teachers yes. and other, you know, characters or you have an authoritative, um, you know, play in our life and we learn from them tremendously without realizing it subconsciously so whatever they do and however they act we are af being affected deeply absolutely and when we learn to act from there and that the hardest part is that there's so much wiring and and tangle entanglement going on yes that yes. when it comes out and you're trying to live and you're doing your best there's so many confusing ideas for example one is that you know i was saying before the idea of people you know you shouldn't feel that way Mm -hmm. Right. We're talking mm -hmm. about in the last last uh, time we we're talking about how people, you know, say you shouldn't feel like this or or, you know, knock it off. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about kind mm -hmm. of thing, mm -hmm. telling us how to feel. And right. one of the hardest things is that we grow up thinking, OK, you know, stop that or you're making me angry. Knock it off. You're making me angry. And kids think that, OK, I can make my parents angry. So a lot of times we realize those smarter kids, they start They'll to push their our parents', parents buttons. Angry. They know exactly. They start testing everything. Right. Oh, I make you angry. I make you sad. I make you annoyed. But what happens is that they start to believe also that other people can make them feel. So when they're going through a relationship and that person breaks their heart and now you know that person made me sad. So if the person made them sad, then that's also the person that can make them happy. 
But the truth is that no one can make you feel. It's already programmed in your head how you feel about something. And when but they can trigger the yes. feelings. So they can be a trigger. So yes. yes, people can make each other feel joy or sadness. But I get what you're saying, that there's this internal mechanism that's more solid. But when, the, when, when there is a case of narcissistic parents, you don't get that solid sense of self. So there's no good enough mother internalized. There's no good enough father right. internalized. So I just want to kind of go to uh, a couple of quotes here. By One is by Seth Meyers, a PSID, and Narcissistic Parents' Psychological Effects on Their Children is the title of this article. And here's what's so confusing. You know, living with narcissistic parents is kind of like a gaslight because you don't really know what's happening until you know what's happening and you can go a lifetime not really knowing what's happening so he writes the truth is narcissistic parents don't have children because they want to nurture and guide their offspring through life they have children so they can have an automatic built-in relationship in which they have power one in which the narcissist can write the rules without any checks and balances, so there's no level of fairness. Understand this, control over someone else is the ultimate jackpot. Every narcissist works so hard to win. The reality of narcissistic parenting couldn't be sadder. The child of the narcissist realizes early on that he or she exists to provide a reflection for the parent and to serve the parent, not the other way around, which is what I mean by system gone wrong. And by the way, everyone, this is a call-in show, so please feel free to call in 323-843- Two eight two six, and I want to talk about grieving the narcissistic parents we never had because we all want parents. We have an idea. What is a parent? A parent is a nurturer. A parent is a protector. A parent is a teacher. A parent is somebody that we we trust. A parent is is someone who's in partnership with the other parent as as, as pillars standing for the relationship. And I think we have a okay. call in. Hi, you are on the couch with Dr. Judy and Zalman Rask Raxin. And uh, hi. Hi. And who am I talking to, please? Dean. Hi, Dean. Nice to speak with you. And where are you calling from? <clears throat> Toronto. Okay, pleasure to talk to a fellow Canadian. Uh, and so, what 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 is it about the show topic that uh, that you can relate to? Yeah, um, I just wanted to pose a question overall about society's view on all of this. When they say uh, it falls into the category of blaming and ultimately bad mouthing, I mean, you could say this about this topic or or any topic, I suppose. But okay. I think it's one of the biggest questions. Okay, so how so yeah. so how would this relate to you? And go ahead and ask the question, and we'll try to answer it. Uh, well, whenever I, I I talk about anything to do with any of this to anyone, <laughs> I'm accused of that. Well, okay, so there's a lot of resistance, especially if you're talking to someone who is. Uh, imbued with narcissistic traits, then they're going to fight back, aren't they? No, nobody wants to be exposed. Everybody wants to get away with their act. Everyone wants to get away with their game of control. So it's kind well, of like the, the people, the, the people that accuse me of doing that. I mean, for first of all, they're pretending that they're great parents, right? That that they don't have any of this kind of stuff going on in their families, right? But even if they make a point, even if, um, how do I say this? Is there a point where any of that is valid? Like that, that, that you can be properly accused of blaming or bad mouthing? Or is that all just fall into the category of, of a being a hypocritical, hypocritical hoax? Well, uh, properly accused of blaming and bad mouthing. You, you can 
properly have a conversation about it. It's called the Peaceful Healing Dialogue, and it's up on my website. You can pull it off the form section, and it would be a conversation that's really not adversarial. It's more of a conversation that would go something like, uh, let's say Zalman hurt my feelings. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> okay, see, resolved. So if, if, if I felt blamed by you, I would say, you know, Zalman, the other day when you said blah, 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 I felt really, really blamed by you. And then, and then on top of it, you criticized me when I tried to explain myself and I felt really, really unheard. And I probably tell you that, you know what, you must have struck a nerve. And I must have responded from a, a place of weakness or being wounded. Um, so I think, you know, part of the response can be, you know, where is your, where is everything coming from? Are you coming from a very, uh, understandably so, you're very angry and hurt. But when you're bringing up the topic or whatever it is you want to discuss, are you bringing it up because you want to be able to heal and move forward? Or is there a lot of resentment that's coming out, a that's, lot of toxicity that is just, they're going to feel that and then they're just going to react exactly how you would expect them to react and, and say that you're blaming and then all these so, different ideas. So that's, a per, that's, that's exactly what I want to make the point of to you, Dean, is that it, consciousness is causal, okay? So even if somebody hurts you, slights you, shames you, blames you, criticizes you, if you come from the consciousness of being an adversary, you're going to end up in panel four, five, six, which is chaos, defenses, and breakdowns. If you come from the consciousness of wanting to clean the situation and 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 give the the person an opportunity to understand what hurt you and give them the opportunity to own their own stuff which is what you were doing in this conversation then there's a chance for repair which is panel seven eight nine okay so it's not so much about whether uh there's appropriate blame or shame <coughs> it's really the consciousness you're coming from. And it's really, really important because if you want to fight back, look at panel six. See panel six for those of you who are able to see it. And if you don't know what the mind map looks like, then go to the website and there's a copy right there for you. And you will see that panel six represents breakdowns. So if we go eye to eye, tooth to tooth, we'll be toothless and we'll be eyeless okay is that a word so now that is now okay <laughs> I just wanted to jump in on, on this idea yeah. so Dean Dean correct yep mm -hmm. yeah, so my question is every time you're having this conversation like what's your goal what are you trying to get out of it are you trying to just express yourself so they should know how you feel or are you trying to get them to apologize also be, because no, no this wasn't my example though my example was Every time I talk to a friend, for instance, if, if, the, if the topic would be narcissism, I would never say to one of my friends, I have narcissistic parents, because he would say that I'm blaming. And ultimately, he would also say that I'm bad-mouthing. Well, they, now, this, this, this would be ignorant society's view. So my question was, what's the response to that? The response to that is that we as a society need more education because if people can't have the conversation about their narcissistic parents with their friends and say, you know, my mom, wow, she was really, really cruel to me. She just put me down and called me stupid. Then there's no place to go. You know, it's a sad world because we're going to feel really isolated. So I think that as we begin to understand that, yes, parents do that. Yes, parents control their kids. Yes, parents devalue their children. Yes, parents abandon their children. And that's why we're having a show on grieving the parents you never had because we're calling them parents. We're calling them mom and they're, we're calling them dad, but are they really acting like a mother? Are they really acting like a father? I say no, they're not. Okay, so we're, we're, we wish we had that parent that could uh, wake up and say, geez, Dean, you know, you're right. There's something off with me. I just called you stupid. I just hurt your feelings my goodness there I, i'm going to go look into the mirror and i'm going to self-reflect and i'm going to try to figure out why i'm so harsh on my child now that's an evolving parent but that's 
that's a parent that's not narcissistic, you understand. And you have to understand that the reason this topic is so blown up today is because finally, it's like the secret is out. We're finally talking about it. And there's still a lot of people that want to cover it up because they don't want to admit that their parents are that way because they want to, everyone wants to put their parents up on a pedestal. So do you see that if you talk to a friend and they're not allowing you to say, my parent hurt my feelings, my parent put me down, they're probably protecting their parents and idealizing right. and their parents. And there's people that think all, all this is silly and it's just lame. And what I'm looking for you to say to me is, what would you say to that? Because to me, that's the, one of the biggest parts of the whole problem is that our society on a talk show like this you can talk about it all you want but you you know there's places you go in society you know common every day where you can't talk about you this. can't and it's only now starting to open up and it's going to take some psycho education on the part of the person 100%. on, the, on the, the part of the society education 100 percent. so what were you going to say I, I wanted to just say that for sure, you're speaking to someone or whoever you're talking to. Obviously, like you said, they don't they don't have that sensitivity. It seems like you're just you know you're being you know whatever you know. You, and and emotions are tremendous. We we feel all the time. And those who don't feel, unfortunately, you know when, when you have pain, you know there's something wrong. You got to take care of it. When you don't feel pain, that means something's seriously wrong, because then it's, the nerves are not it's not working at all. So I was gonna say that. You know, what's if you went and you said, I take full responsibility for who I am and how I've become, but I also would like to be able to express, you know, what I've gone through. And it's not about blaming anyone because I take responsibility, but I, I just want to be able to speak it out and have somebody listen to me. And that's all. Yeah. Well, okay. Mm hmm if if I if I criticize anyone, if I say anything negative or bad about anyone, in this case parents, right? Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as blame? Like, is there a place to use the word blame anymore? I don't really think there is. I, I think, think that we as human beings should express ourselves mm -hmm. as we feel about ourselves or about other people. Period. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I go back to the distinction. If I just point fingers and point fingers and blame, and then I'm part of the problem too. If I'm expressing how I'm feeling and the person is saying, oh, you're just blaming, you're just criticizing, guess what? You're talking to the wrong person, okay? Next, talk to somebody that can empathize with you, that can be an enlightened witness to you, that can stand in your shoes, that can understand how you're thinking and feeling, and then, and then maybe then you will feel connected too. If somebody shuts you down, they're pretty much doing the same thing to you that your parents did. So you've heard yeah, of the yeah. right? You've heard of the term flying monkey, right? You've turned you've heard of that term. So now they're just another flying monkey protecting the system gone wrong. And we know that historically there are a lot of people who've protected a lot of systems gone wrong. So this is just another one. So I hope we've answered some questions and by all means feel free to reach out to the Psychological Healing Center if you if you have more questions. And uh, thank you so much for calling in, Dean. Well, and, yeah, I, I just yeah. wanted to add in the end there, there's an awful lot of intolerance for this that's still left. It, there is, okay, around. and that's why we're doing shows like this, and we have many, yeah. so that people can understand what the Freud is going on, and what the Freud yeah. is going on is that there are a lot of unhealthy people, and they, they possess narcissistic qualities, and their parents, or whoever they are, bosses, teachers, so on, and they're not really interested in the psycho-spiritual growth of other people. They're more interested in vampiring their energy or controlling them so that they can be better than or demeaning them, or demeaning them so they could be better than. So we, that's why we're, we at the Psychological Healing Center are doing the best that we can to, to take down the system gone wrong. Also, Dean, quickly. Well, that's, thank uh, you. You're um, welcome. And uh, just one other thing. And Dean, please get a copy of my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect. It'll explain a lot. And next time somebody doesn't listen, shoot them a copy of my book. It's free. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Assuming that they'd be interested in reading. Yeah. Probably. They might put it, you know, they might 
file it in the trash file, but you know, why why not give it a shot? So I was gonna say, Dean, when when you're communicating to somebody your feelings, if you never say about you never talk about anybody else, you don't say, well, you know, when, when you know my dad did this or my mom did this, but you say this is how I feel when this is done. There is no blame. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just telling you how I feel. You understand? If it's, it's looked it's looked upon as immature. Like you shouldn't be saying bad things. Okay, no I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, things, you're talking you're people. you're talking to the wrong audience. They can think it's immature. Yeah. They can say it's immature. They could say it's betrayal. They can think this and think that. Who cares? Okay, it doesn't feel good when you don't have a friend to talk to to say, "Wow, I can't, I, I can't believe what my mother said or my father said or what they did." I, I need you to understand this because you're my best buddy in the world, and I feel so isolated. Thanks for listening. Thanks for understanding. If you're not talking to a person who can be an, a somewhat of an enlightened witness, I'm not asking for perfection here. Then don't talk to them about this. They're the wrong audience. Got it? They're not, they're not friends. Yeah. No, they're thank the wrong you, audience. They can't give it to you. They don't have what to give you. They don't. Okay. At least in this. So thank, thank you so much for calling in. And uh, we're going to continue on this grieving process because bottom line, no matter what, at the end of the day, it really, really hurts. And sometimes you don't even know what is hurting until you start connecting those dots and understanding Really? Parents aren't supposed to control me like this? Or seriously? There's something wrong with the fact that uh, uh, my, my, my father is telling me that he wants me to be a doctor because he's a doctor, but I'm not interested in being a doctor, but yet I'm being, for, you know, th what's wrong with this picture? There's something wrong with this picture. Okay? You know, I, in, in a lot of the time I spend uh, working with teens, and you know, there's always that somewhere where the the mind you know clicks on, and people start to choose to do things for themselves, and that's when the, we call it rebelling, or they just start doing their own thing. Yes. And you know, until that point, they were literally under the works of their parents or whoever the educators, whoever it was. So they wake up in middle, and they say, "I don't like this anymore." And often they run from everything, even though there could be a lot of good that was there. But they just disassociate. I think we have a caller. So thank you. And feel free to pick up that point. And please um, welcome to the show. And what is your name, please? Hi. Good evening, Dr. Judy and Zolman. This is Robert. Hi, Robert. Nice to hear from you. Thank you. You've been a fan for a long time. And... Um, yeah, how do you relate to this topic? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for choosing this topic. You're welcome. And first, well, grieving the parents I never had, I that's what I've been doing the past yep. year and a half since I discovered you guys. You know, I did a show called Grieving the Parents You Never Had back in October two years ago, and we're in October, so I thought, you know, I want to get more specific. I want people to understand that when we have narcissistically um, oriented parents, we're, we're calling them parents, and we wish and hope that they would come through and, you know, take them by the collar and shake them till they holler and wake up, and you know the, you know the rap. They usually or never do. Okay, so what do we have left? We have this grief process. It's just like, wow, that hurts. I really didn't have a nurturing mother. I really didn't have a supportive father. So take it from there, because I know that you have a lot to say about this. Well, well, it, well don't it basically come down to acceptance? And, and isn't that the resolution? And how does it work with the point of no return? Uh -huh. So I believe with grief, so w let's start with acceptance. Is that the final curtain? Well, is that's why I have Zalman here, because he's a grief recovery so, expert. So grieving the parents you never had, apply your knowledge so the, base the to this. the idea of the accepting, so, you know, it's, it's when, we, when, we, when we come to this idea in, in, in like a workshop, it comes across the idea of forgiving. Now, I mentioned this last time, so I'll just explain a bit more. Forgiving doesn't mean it's okay what you did and let's just move on. Forgiving means I give up the hope and dream of a better yesterday. So 
the idea of acceptance is that this is the way it is. You it know, is what it is. My my parents or you know my father doesn't know how to say I love you, but he'll do this. So I accept that as the reality, and I will communicate on whatever level I can with him. But I I stopped trying to make him be something he's not. Beautiful. Try you know always that one of the ideas of grief is that you reach out for something that's either always been there for you or never been there for you to only find out that one more time when you need them you reach out and either they're they're not there anymore or they they're not there again they're not they've never been there and this is the process right. why it hurts so much cuz it's continuously happening we're still grieving and this it's, idea. A, it's it is what i refer to as a double dungeon of darkness because it's not really it's it's more than a loss it's a, an insult to injury it's you know it's <coughs> it's how would you describe it i'm trying to wrap my head around the, the description narcissistic parents. is there's a loss there so you're losing something you never had it's but you're losing death. the wish and the hope that you could have it or should have it or could still have it and that's why we get into the wtf because if the parents don't give it to us then we seek relationships that are the same quality, rejecting or demeaning or devaluing so that we can come full circle and complete the psychological file and it becomes that panel four, five, six nightmare. Chaos, defenses and breakdowns and we constantly uh, chase the golden chalice until, until what? How does, how does it resolve? In the idea of grief? Yeah, the idea of grief. You know, this is... If we're talking about the narcissistic parent, like I said, it's the living dead. So... The li thank you, dead, the living dead. But they're alive, <laughs> but they're not. So, I mean, and they, they feed off your flesh and whatever, whatever the fantasies they, they, they yeah, created the, for this idea. But right, yeah. it, it's never... It doesn't just stop. It, it, it goes one or two. Either you, you're, you bleed out emotionally and you don't feel anymore or care. Yeah, you or become... You, you become, become a wreck. Yeah. But also you become like them because now you cut your, you know, in order to survive, you cut your heart out and then you're, you, you become heartless too. And then you can do unto others and not really feel. So you could project your anger, you could demean them and, you know, maybe it'll feel good for a minute, but then you need more fuel. So yeah. can turn that way. These are picking up the habits. Like yeah, picking you, up the character. If you're always told you're worthless and you're nothing, what happens is when you'll go to school or wherever and someone else will start to do it to you. Either you'll just let them, you know, beat you with these ideas or you're gonna explode and you're gonna, you know, show rage and whatever it is to get them away from you. And now you're acting out from what was going uh, on. Or you can do one more thing, which is identify with the aggressor and become like them. If you can't beat them, join them. So then you'll become the the, the bully. Yeah. You'll become the demeanor. So um, how to work with this? Yeah. Right? How to so, how how do you face the music that your parent was never a parent? So, Are you calling them a parent? Hi mom. Hi dad. I love you mom. I love you dad. Okay, they may have some nice qualities. No no denying that. Not so in all cases, some cases. It's, it's, How do you deal with that? It's first off, if, if I could tell you I could answer this while sitting here, <laughs> I can't. But Crack just the to code. start just to start rolling the ball. Um, I, I think, you know, it's very important just in general, words words that we use and how we relate to them. Sometimes I could say one thing and, and you can think it means something else to you, but it's the same word. And I would say in, in this sense, how do we deal with, you know, the living dead, you know, the narcissistic parent, it's it, there is no love over there, let's say. It, it's that burning and that want to, to love. Um, I would use it for a word that, you know, respect the fact that, you know, they're the ones who brought you in. Even, you know, people say it's a cursed world for them because of that. And not necessarily the word respect. If that word doesn't work for you and that, you know, gets you all like, you know, don't right. say you that, don't I don't respect to. them. Right. It's, it's finding a word that when you're going to do something, right? Because ultimately you want to stay and be a healthy human being. So if you're going to start bad mouthing them and talking down about them, then you're going to, you're starting to build these traits in yourself. You're starting to get used to saying negative about others. Which is different than expressing yourself going back to Dean's statement. You know, it is healthy to say, my mother hurt me, or boy, you can't believe what she says. I, I, I don't really call that bad mouthing because I think we all have to Express. Well, if the purpose okay. is to heal, the purpose and is not to, to get kill. it out and to express yes, and to be great. heard. That that's fair. Yes, I think it's, it, it's healthy. I, I, yeah, I, I would like to comment on Dean's statement. 
because I did tell a couple people about what was happening with my mother as well as my father. Mm-hmm. And they said to me, if I were you, I wouldn't even speak to them. Okay, so Which, it was an opposite uh, uh, reaction to what Dean's been getting, yes? Yes, yes. They said, yeah. why would you even speak to them? And, and I mentioned the very light, light contact, what you told me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've been speeding off of that. But You know, in this business of contact versus non-contact, it's such a personal choice. Some people just can't bear to not have a parent in their life at some level. Okay, great. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. We know whatever whatever is uh, is is going to work for you. Okay, where you don't want to go is you don't want to put your heart on a plate to them. You don't want to give them any rope to control you. So this is where you draw back. And so. Um, I, I, I tell my patients that if they're going to have conversations with their mother or father, have them be object-oriented. Like, oh, the soup was very good, wasn't it, Mom? You know, just these kind of um, un, unemotional, untriggering conversations if you really want to just have them on some level yeah. in your life. I would, I would add in this idea, I mean, we're human so if we have emotions going, that means, you know, we're alive, we're good. You know, we didn't shut down yet. And I think it's important to set up, like I said, a, a word, but the idea of what the relationship is. So whenever you're going over or you're going to have a conversation, like I know that this is what's going to be. I know that, you know, they're my parents and whatever, how I see them, that's that's what it is. I'm not expecting that all of a sudden they're going to wake up and be like, oh, my that, goodness. That's the healing. OK, and that's the healing. And then part two of the healing from a mind map perspective is that the purpose of the mind map is to create a better part two for your life. So if you're at the effect of narcissistic parents and there are six signs, I want to read them here. It's by I can't even read Anne, uh something or other. I can't read her last name. Six signs you were raised by a narcissist. Uh, article on 10, 12, 15. Okay, so she says, to outsiders, your dad is a larger than life social magnet who attracts people from all walks of life. Your mom is the perfect woman. She's always looking to please and <clears throat> juggle everything with ease and maybe even volunteer at the uh, the school or the church or the synagogue or whatever, but behind closed doors, all pretenses fall away. And there's the cold shoulder and there's the demeaning and the age-inappropriate demands and so on and so forth. So there are six signs you were raised by a narcissist. I'll just go through them and then we'll go back to the topic, which is how to grieve this okay so mm-hmm. so you're how, how you're up you're up against your complete doormat you're up against you're afraid you might be a narcissist yourself you're up against uh, you feel re- relentlessly competitive or resentful of your siblings and please for those of you who haven't seen the episode on sibling rivalry parents set all those uh, dominoes in place so that p- as siblings end up attacking each other uh, as a result of the system gone wrong <coughs> You derive self-worth slowly from your achievements. So it's what you do, not who you are. So these are some of the outcomes of narcissism. You have no sense of yourself, your wants or your needs, or your goals. You just feel like a nothing, a worthless. I was doing core beliefs with somebody today. She is a child of a narcissistic mother. It just feels like worthless, empty. Yeah, and, and not just exist. the feeling of who you are, but when you try and do things, they come out like you know you're a failure. Right. Well, you're never good enough. So and, how can I? So so what? So part of I think grieving this is healing ourselves because if we can, if we can be at if we're at the effect of the narcissistic parenting, which is this is the have the effect of the narcissistic parenting that which I read off, and we're no longer triggered because we're not identified with who they think we are. We dismantle the negative core beliefs they leave us with. We no longer get triggered by those negative core beliefs. And so therefore, we are not at the effect and we can 
in essence be the cause of a yeah. better outcome would, for ourselves. So they lose they lose the power and control. That is the biggest healing. I would say I can step think. one. You okay. Know, and I apologize if it comes out you know very rough. Um, you know, there's I don't know if it's a saying or not, but I've heard this. It goes, it may not be your fault, but it sure as hell is your problem. Sorry. <laughs> But it's yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, it's it, true. It sure, it sure as hell is your sure problem. Sure is now after you second, come out of this and system. This, yeah. But the moment you can can make that you know that conscious understanding, so it's not my fault, right? This is this is who I am now. This I'm, I'm a product of what happened, right? Yes. But the moment you know the, the the light goes off in your head, and now you can start to consciously do things. Now, when you can become aware and realize that you know these are all a lot of these are they're lies. They're not true. You're not that's worthless. That's it. They're, they're, they're yeah. lies that entangle into our negative core beliefs, and that's what we have to dismantle. In essence, we're we're saying the same yes. thing, that we've got to identify the lies, we've got to understand that they've created a problem, and we are the only ones that can get ourselves out of this psychological prison, so to speak. And then action, doing actions with this new ideas on our head. Because don't forget, I don't know how many years a person was living until they realized this. Mm -hmm. To change that, it's not going to change overnight. It might no. take some time with, with better habits and better thinking of about themselves, you know, meditating eventually over time that can become your second nature and you can start to live from that healthier place and i'm reminding everyone that according to research only less than one percent of the general population has evidence of full-blown narcissistic personality disorder so probably most of, of what we're talking about are narcissistic traits and some heavier than others because we can't just so indiscriminately throw this around like you're a narcissist oh she's a narcissist yeah. why is she a narcissist because she hurt yeah. my feelings well okay that that yeah. doesn't quite I mean, in general i'm not a qualify. fan of any kind okay. of labels or names because it, it's too general um but like i was mentioning before a good way to know where you're headed in a conversation or when something happens think about do i want to be happy at the end of this or do i want to be right because often, very often, you will find that what's what's right, it may not be easy, it may be hard, it may have to swallow some pride and, and your ego, but ultimately you know that it's going to make you happy. You'll be happier. And don't forget, when conversing with uh, narcissistic personality disorder, heavily laden traits of, of that, of that you're never oh. really going to be right. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't offering it to there. I thought we got that. I was saying for a tip for, for those of us who who are not necessarily dealing with that or a relationship with not in that situation, to be able to just stay focused for ourselves so we don't end up in a situation like that. Right. Um, to be able to just stay focused, focused on where we're going with, with whatever it is that we're doing, what's the end result we want. So I, I want I want to ask you, Robert, where are you at? Because you've been doing so much work and reading yeah. and listening to uh, uh, my YouTubes and, and calling us. And so where are you? I'm my mentor. Mm -hmm. And um, well, first of all, I've been very light contact it's a superficial contact, but I do feel like if, if I go into contact, I will be vampired. Okay. So and you my know your limits. Will be depleted. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's hear what, you know, both of your opinion on the vampire. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. It's not coming out, but it is what it <laughs> is. <laughs> so Thank you. Okay, so uh, what, what were you saying? You want to hear our thoughts on the vampiring? Well, when you're aware of it, you, you, you still feel that you're, they look at you with the eyes of a shark. Uh, you haven't called with your problem. Yes. And the father, who is more of a sociopath, a con artist who just says, oh, the hell with you. You didn't call. You, you have no respect for your pa your mother. Your mother says you don't want a father. They flip it. They flip so, it where so, so. they don't even reach out. So the, the best the best way I can say it is once you recognize that it's manipulation lies garbage then you just identify it and not with it that's such a key phrase that i i'm glad i put into my book and i say it often when you identify with it you become at the effect of it so if i say oh uh robert you're stupid and let's say you have a whole history of, of parents calling you stupid I am now the trigger for 
what caused you to feel that way. Now, if you don't feel stupid and you were, were not called stupid and you don't have that blueprinting, then my comment to you of Robert, you're stupid, would go straight into the garbage can. It's like, come on, you know, all right. I it'll think just I've, roll off me. I, it'll just like a, you know, water off of a duck. So that's where we know that we've got those hooks. So wherever we have those hooks, that's why it's so essential in the mind map process. I help patients and we help patients understand their negative core beliefs because that is the Achilles heel. That's the hook in. And if we don't dismantle that, then all of those messages, you're stupid, you're worthless, you're uh, um, uh, not even, you shouldn't have even been born. You know, these messages are very deep and very destructive. And then they become identified with. The difference is yeah. that when we identify it, we can just say garbage, nonsense, lies, next. I would add also. Okay, for and this... freedom, freedom 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 from being triggered freedom from falling into that hole in the soul because they said so it's freedom totally yeah and ultimately i would say for this to even you know have a chance to work you know we can just talk and then you know you'll come in and i'll hang up all the hang on the phone and then have a conversation and boom you'll go right back it you really need to set some time to discuss this or think this or contemplate it. you got to really put some effort in because it's not just going to change. You've been living real life with these things going on. Right. So it's not just going to disappear. You got to be able to take the new ideas and implement them and whatever it is that works for you. And, and I just want to add, it's not just you identifying it. It's a, another person, an outside person, like a therapist. Specifically, I'll say mind map therapist because we're very interested in the cause of the problem and how the cause encodes into a psychovirus that might be so unconscious. I remember doing that exercise with one of my patients. She didn't even know that her core belief is that I'm worthless. She didn't know until I said those words and she just burst into tears. I said, wow, I had no idea that you felt that way. She said, I had no idea that I felt that way. So sometimes it's so unconscious that, that it's more than just sitting there and thinking it through. You just have to have somebody literally Guiding. throw it at you, throw it at you, and then you feel yeah. it in your solar plexus, and then you know, oh, ow, wow, that really hurts. And then the work begins to separate the lie from the truth, go back to the cause, see what the cause was so that we can backtrack it and say, oh, no wonder I feel that way. It's because my mother blueprinted me to feel that way. My father blueprinted me, yeah. okay? I mean, imagine you believe something for so long yeah. and then someone else comes and tells you, oh, that's a lie. And you go, no, it's not, okay? That's right. So it, it's gonna take some time and some proof Right, some psychological Proof, being detective. It's just that that it doesn't. I'm 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 saying it doesn't take as much time as one might think because as soon as you see, it's a paradigm shift. It's not really time. As soon as you see that that was born out of, out of a a really negative, uh, 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 childhood wound, then you don't have to take that to mean that that's who you are you can see that that's not who you are that that's something that of course you it infiltrated into the fiber of your being because you were young you were vulnerable you trusted your your parents so you opened your permeable membranes and you said yes mom yes dad i am stupid yes 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 and all that garbage went in until we we, we take that down and we source it back to cause and we help to let the psychological poison out. And that's just a big deal of, of, of what we do at the Psychological Healing Center is if you don't let that psychological poison out, then what happens is you implode and you explode, project on other people, okay? Yeah, and it's not the right. It's not the right the way. The same idea with the grief. It's grieving anything is it'll lead to the same ideas. It'll be all this emotion building up inside, and if you don't express it, if you don't get it out, you know, there's a lot of times that you have something you really wanted to tell someone, 
and then they they walked away or they didn't want to hear it and or just, they won't it, hear it yeah and it's just and you said it and they didn't hear it and you feel like they're not even listening to you and it just it's inside and it's it's boiling inside you and you just you can't think or focus on about on anything else that is the idea of the grief that the grief is just sitting there that they the emotion or so whatever you have it is. to tell someone yes. like a grief counselor so that you can complete the file because the herder can't be the healer you see you can't tell right. the person who hurt you you know you really hurt my feelings because if they're unconscious and and they're not growing themselves they're just gonna hurt you again or they're gonna ignore you or they're gonna defend or they're gonna say no i didn't you yeah. know you're just being critical like what and it's, Dean it's said. tough because <laughs> when you express it to people even yeah. if it's a good friend mm -hmm. you know and 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 they're very important but sometimes they may know who you're talking about they know the relationship and they they may be like oh no it's not really they, you can there's some sort of like opinion of what's going on over here like they know who you are and, the, and or your parent or whoever it is and you may not be able to. You may not feel like you are actually heard fairly, like like you're like uh, Dean was saying, how they're looking. Which at him is like. another injury because again, you're not being mirrored. Again, you're not being understood. And I know we're almost out of time. We're going to jump to our shrink that tune. And uh, Robert, any last minute comments or anything? Yeah, the co I I do have a comment about the point of no return. W once I go to them. I feel like my energy will be depleted, and then what's the point? Who, who's good am I serving when, after yeah. all the abuse, I'm healing and loving myself, yes. and I know my negative core beliefs from them? Okay, so I, I, is it still worth it? Sometimes not. Sometimes not, because it's kind of like if you take mm -hmm. a shower and then you jump into a polluted body of water, you know? So you just have to watch, watch out for that, and that's why... You know, I'll never say to somebody who's not ready for no contact or maybe it's not even necessary, no contact. It's just that at the end of the day, please put yourself first, whatever that means to you. OK, and if you're I feeling words part of life. me. Those words are just words to live by. And yes, you don't <clears throat> take it seriously or or understand the true meaning of it well you know because your your psyche knows when you're tired and you're drained and when you're people when you're talking to people who don't get you when you're talking to people who don't mirror you and don't give you uh, a, a space or a place to 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 witness your pain really I told Dean the same thing you're talking to the wrong people so stop and talk to the people who understand this, who can empathize with this, who can uh, validate what you've gone through, because there's nothing worse than being injured and then being re-injured by people who don't get it. It's a horrible, it's a very isolating feeling. So yeah, so know your audience, okay? So with mm. that, thank you so much for calling in, and I wanna just say thank that- you, yeah, You're welcome, Robert, always. And uh, I, I want to reiterate that we at the Psychological Healing Center are here to help you close those emotional files so that you don't do the what the Freud, you don't get, have the hole in the soul left with, with un, unresolved grief. And that's why we have Zalman Ra Zalman Rax Roxen. Roxen. I keep wanting to say Rask. Roxen. Okay. Salman Roxon, our grief therapist, and then we have other wonderful people on staff, and uh, um, you get to pick who you want to work with, or if you want to do the mind map video series, which is available at a very low fee of $195, and that's me standing in front of a camera and breaking down all the panels, about eight and a half hours worth of, of time. Thank you for that. And uh, also a case study in there and a peaceful healing dialogue demo. And I believe I have my grandson in there uh, breaking it down from a child's perspective. So a lot of info and, uh, and, and there, there's, there's no reason not to do the mind map therapy. I think that everyone is uh, pretty able to access some level of this work including the fee the free videos and the books so with that said we're going to go to numb <clears throat> lincoln park <laughs> so numb is what happens when we just uh bleed out i guess and 
our yeah. heart gets ripped out. So uh, let's shrink this tune. I'm tired of being what you want me to be, feeling so faithless, lost under the surface. I don't know what you're expecting of me. Put under the pressure of walking in your shoes, caught in the undertow, caught in the undertow. Every step I take is another mistake to you. Caught in the undertow, just caught in the undertow. Whoa. Go ahead, that's I mean, heavy that's, duty. Uh, that's <sighs> kind of like the idea of literally just you're living for someone else. You are a little puppet. Yep. And whatever Caught in their said, undertow. That's it. And you're walking in their shoes and no. it's probably stinky and sweaty and no just place to fit. go. Yeah. Right. And then being ridiculed if they if you don't yeah, do, do what mean, they say. Every I love this line. Every <coughs> step that I take is another mistake, just another chance to demean, devalue, destroy. I become so numb, I can't feel you there, become so tired, so much more aware. By becoming this, all I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. Sometimes the opposite happens, yeah, by it the way. Yeah, that. Pardon me? You're saying the opposite. Happens. Sometimes they become like that. Right. But then some people become the opposite, right? Yeah, I mean, because I think over here he's starting to realize maybe what's going on. And he's getting... Doesn't want to be part of it. Yeah, so yeah. sick and tired of it that mm -hmm. I just don't want it anymore. I just no, and not want to be like that But who either. says, you know, this could be 30 years later. Could, yeah, or, yeah. Can't you see that you're smothering me? This is the smothering, controlling I injury. Holding too tightly, afraid to lose control. Because everything you thought I would be has fallen apart right in front of you. I guess they didn't comply. Uh, caught in the undertow. Every step that I take is just another mistake to you. Uh, and every second I waste is more than I can take. Yeah. What do you think? So this is just more of, um, a, 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 it's really <clears throat> describing the smothering injury. And so the, the, at, at, at a certain point, they can't take it anymore. So this person's beginning to implode. I become so numb. They, they've cut their heart out because they don't want to feel this. I can't feel you. Become so tired. That's the vampiring effect. They're just drained by all of this. Uh, by becoming this, all I want to do is be more like me and less like you. This is just a pair of another. And I would ask the question is, who, who is who is me? Well, I think they don't know themselves right. because so they never you, have. Who, who am I? I think they're trying to figure that out. And I know I may end up failing too, but I know you were just like me with, so with someone disappointed in you. This is so very wise because this person is aware of the multi-generational effects. So he's saying, wow, I get it. Somebody did this to you. Hmm? I become so numb. I can't feel you. Become so tired. I become so numb. And it just keep, keeps repeating, tired and numb, vampired, and the heart is now hardened, and the narcissistic shell of, of, of shutting down is beginning to happen because they can't take it anymore. They don't want to feel the pain. So, okay, I think that's our show for tonight. And please um, feel free to call, uh, call us at the Psychological Healing Center write us and uh, we are here for 15 minute free consultations. I know Zalman uh, would be happy to uh, consult with you. And um, again, he does mind map therapy, grief counseling at the Psychological Healing Center. And then we have a beautiful team of people. You can go scroll down and meet the team and read about uh, the team and uh, everyone uh, on our team. Oh, we have a new Spanish speaking person. Ed, Edward Gonzalez, for those of you who need Spanish. And uh, uh, just scroll down to meet the team and see who's on staff and who you might feel comfortable working with if you want to do this kind of work. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, callers. And I really appreciate everyone who tuned in from all over the world, our beautiful international audience. Good night, everybody. Bye.